Hi, I'm Graham, and welcome back to Man vs Film. This is going to be a list of top 10 movies that you can watch on Amazon Prime US for the month of October 2017. And it is a particularly horror filled month as it is October. So let's get started. Number 10, Southbound. Five interlocking tales of terror following the fates of a group of weary travellers who confront their worst nightmares and darkest secrets over one long night. Southbound is an anthology movie and usually I find that these are kind of hit and a miss but this is the most consistent five stories I've seen in the longest while in an anthology series. There's some real interesting tales here. There are some ones that it's set up and you think you know exactly where it's going only for it to take a left turn and do something completely different. It's full of scares, it's full of horror. They interlock quite well as well and I think it is very much worth your time. Number nine is Midnight Meat Train. A photographer's obsessive pursuit of a dark subject matter leads him into the path of a serial killer who stalks late night commuters. Bradley Cooper stars as a photographer and Vinnie Jones as Mahogany, the colour who stalks people on a train and if you're the last one on it, you're not making it to your stop. This movie is uh, written by Clive Barker, it holds all his body horror best moments in this one movie. It's one that seemed to skate by and never really got the attention that it should have. It's not a fantastic movie, but it is a very good movie. And for this month particularly, it's something you should search out and actually check out. I think it's pretty good. And no, I'm not going to tell you any more about it. You just need to check this one out. Number eight is The Dark Half. Novelist Thad Beaumont has buried his alter ego, George Stark, a pseudonym he used to write dark fiction when a series of murders lead to the grave of George Stark, Beaumont becomes the prime suspect. Based on a Stephen King novel and directed by George A. Romero, The Dark Half has a really good performance by Timothy Hutton in the lead role who plays both Thad and a kind of version of George in this murder mystery where he may very well be the colour that he's searching for. It is a mind-bending, twisting tale as you'd expect no less from King and this one it's probably best knowing not much more than what I've just told you. It is a good movie, it's some nice cinematography and it's got some nice touches by Romero and I think it's a terrific adaptation of a Stephen King book. Number seven, The Magnificent Seven. Seven gunmen in the Old West gradually come together to help a poor village against savage fiends. Directed by Anton Fuqua, one of my sort of most loved directors. He never makes a great movie, but he always makes a kind of interesting, fun movie. Stars uh, Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, Chris Pratt, Vincent D'Onofrio, the whole host of people in this movie. It's a kind of slow build as they kind of gather the team together up until this prolonged explosive finale with most of the, the, the cast getting decimated along the way. It's a, a pretty fun movie. And once it gets to that action set piece, it really takes off and really becomes something more, something better, something uh, very exciting indeed. Number six is Cloverfield. A group of friends venture deep into the streets of New York on a rescue mission during a rampaging monster attack. There's another Cloverfield movie coming out. 10 Cloverfield Lane last year was pretty good and I went back and checked out Cloverfield. It is a monster movie but done in a found footage way. The only problem I have with it is most of the characters aren't really that memorable. The, the main monster is pretty good and the fact that it's, it's kind of decimating this city is nice. Although the found footage is a nice touch, I wish it wasn't in this movie. I wish this movie was just basically shot the way a normal movie would be. Still, with the next one coming out, it's good to get back to PC where it all started and you know, it's horror. It fits this month. It's a little bit sci-fi as well. Number five is Hell Baby. An expectant couple who move into the most haunted house in New Orleans call upon the services of the Vatican's elite exorcism team to stop them from a demonic baby. It's a horror comedy but it definitely leans more towards the comedy sides of things. Uh, it, it follows along a typical storyline as you would see in these movies but they play it very much for laughs. It is full of comedy actors who you know kind of from things, you're never quite sure who they are or quite sure what their name are but you, you know you've seen them before in other things and it comes together in a, a movie that is actually pretty fun and shouldn't be 
It's got some nice scares in it as well. It's got some really funny repeat jokes. I mean, the horror starts on it, even though it's a comedy movie, it gives a little bit of uh, the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. It's fun. It's interesting. And if you're sticking to the solid horror this month, this is something a little bit lighter to, to lighten your mood before we move on to some more scares. Number four is Switchback. An FBI agent who has been hunting the elusive serial killer discovers that his son has been kidnapped by the killer. And now he must track them down before they disappear forever into the mountains. Danny Glover stars as the serial killer and Dennis Quaid is the FBI agent trying to track him down. Jared Leto appears in the movie as well for a little bit in this twisting, turning thriller that does have moments of horror. Like I said, Danny Glover is the serial killer and they don't play up any mystery at all. He quite clearly kills several people at the start very efficiently and Dennis Quaid is just desperate to get a hold of him. There is lots of nice action set pieces along the way and there is a car that is interestingly decorated inside that for some reason has stuck with me after all the years of seeing this movie. This is one of these FBI agents on the hunt um, and, and the killer is playing a mind game with him, teasing him, taunting him along the way, knowing that it's going to be extremely hard to catch up with him to stop him. Number three is no country for old men. Violence and mayhem ensue after a hunter stumbles on a drug deal gone wrong and finds more than two million dollars at this scene. This is probably the Coen Brothers' best version of a horror movie, I would say, because you have this unstoppable force, much like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees um, uh, with Javier Bardem's character, who is non-stop. He's a killing machine. He has no emotion. Uh, he doesn't care if, if the toss of his coin lands incorrectly for you. He's just going to take you out, and that's just the way things roll. You have Josh Brolin as the man that finds the money, who goes on the run, who makes the mistake of being a little bit compassionate, and it ultimately is his undoing. This is a movie bad enough st uh, soundtrack, and it's kind of eerily put together as this is pretty much a long chase movie. Number two is Carrie. Carrie White, a shy, friendless teenage girl, who is sheltered by her domineering religious mother, unleashes her telekinetic powers after being humiliated by her classmates at her senior prom. This is the Brian De Palma directed one from the 70s, based on the Stephen King book, which is pretty terrific in itself. De Palma paints this picture of a girl alienated, oppressed, put down, just downright neglected, who has developed these powers, whether it be from consistent beatings or humiliation or whatever. And when she's pushed just a little bit too far, pushes back in extremely bloody fashion. I think Carrie is a terrifically put together horror movie that has lasted the test of time. It's almost 40 years old and I think it's absolutely wonderful. The build up of the character can be off-putting and weird because you actually feel for Carrie. You just want to grab her and give her a shake and tell her that you know, like, this is how things really work. But Nobody really does that with her. They always kind of molly coddle her and then she goes home to this mother who punishes her for the slightest thing. When the finale finally gets to where it's going, it's one that you just you feel kind of bittersweet about. You know, Carrie's taking out revenge when she perceives things to be not how they are. And it's, it's sad because up until the end she's given the life that she wants. This is the best thing about these horror movies. They create characters that you kind of want nothing bad to happen to, but ultimately you know it's going to. If you haven't seen Carrie, don't check out the remake. Check out the original from the 70s. That is fantastic. Number one is Saw. Two strangers awaken in a room with no recollection of having got there or why, and soon after discover they are pawns in a deadly game perpetrated by a notorious serial killer. I recently rewatched Saw, and I pretty much forgot how fantastic this movie is. I think it's been diluted because of the ever decreasing sequels that came out after it, but this original is a masterpiece of storytelling and direction. I think James Wan really makes a strong debut here with this movie that is primarily set in one room, but is extremely kinetic and full of energy. Then you have this ultimate mystery that is surrounding the full thing. A movie that even when you know the twist at the end, still surprises you and still keeps you thoroughly entertained. That's down to Wano's script. I think it's a great movie. It's fantastic. I can't wait for part eight, even though I didn't like some of the Saw sequels too much. But yeah, going back to this one, you just go, wow, one of the best horror movies this century. If you haven't seen Saw, you need to check it out. 
So that's the 10 movies for October 2017. If there's anything I missed out or something I should have had on my list, let me know in the comment box below and I'll see if it makes it onto my list next month. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Man vs Film.